talking to my son on the phone while he was going to pick up his little boy from preschool. And when he got there, he said, Mom, i got to go inside, but I'll tell you what. When I come out, I'll let you FaceTime him. So he went in, and, and then he, when he came out, he put his little boy in the car seat, and then he, he let him hold the phone since he had to drive. So he, my little grandson's holding the phone, and he's, he's looking at me. I said, hold the phone up, because I only see this much of you, your, your chin. And he, so he pulls it up, and, and he says, hi, Grandma. I said, what did you learn at school today? And he said, the stone was rolled away. And I said, the stone was rolled away. And then he had this, this paper with all these stickers on it, and there's this great big stone that, that had been rolled away, and there was a sticker of the tomb, and there was these two ladies, the Marys and the, well, really three ladies, the Marys and Salome. And, and then there was an angel there. And so I said, so you learned that the stone was rolled away? And he said, yet the stone was rolled away. He's, and I said, Jesus is alive. He's risen, isn't he? And he goes, yes, the stone was rolled away. And I want you to know that I had been sitting on my couch praying and talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, what is your heart? What do you want, want to say to, to your people this Easter week? And he said, the stone has been rolled away. The stone is rolled away. And so I knew when, when my little grandson said like two to three times that the stone was rolled away, that God was speaking to me. I want you to know that the stone has been rolled away, that the tomb is empty, Jesus Christ is alive. The stone has been rolled away. See, when Jesus came and he died on that cross, when he he hung on that cross. The Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. He was nailed to that cross, and he took on himself all of our sins and all of our weaknesses, all of our pains, all of our shame, all of our suffering, all of our sickness was died, w w that was put upon him when he was nailed to that cross. He put it all upon himself. All those places where the enemy had attacked us was now being defeated as he hung on that cross. And when he cried out right before he died, it is finished, then that was done. It was completed. What God had sent his son into the world to be that perfect sacrifice for our sins, to take our place, was finished. It was finished. When he held, it is finished. It was done. And then the Bible says he, he died. He died for us. Well, when he died, the Bible says they took him down from, from the cross, and that Joseph of Arimathea, a rich man, went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And he asked if he could bury him. Now, Joseph of Arimathea, the Bible says in Isaiah 53, that he was with a rich man in his death, fulfilling prophecy, that he was with a rich man in his death because he, he committed no sin, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. So Jesus, Jesus was given to Joseph, and Nicodemus came and brought all these spices, and they, they put him in his garden tomb that was hewed out in a rock, and they took this huge, the Bible says a huge stone, and put it in front of the tomb. This huge stone that was meant to keep everyone out of that tomb was put there. You see, that stone meant a lot to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They went to Pilate, and they said, we want that stone intact. We don't want the, the disciples coming and stealing Jesus' body because Jesus said that in three days that he would ri rise from the dead. And if they come and steal his body, then it'll be worse than it was when he, that deceiver was alive. That's what they called him. But I love this, that Jesus told his disciples that he would raise three days after he died. And it just like, they didn't, they didn't. They had no comprehension, but the Pharisees grabbed hold of it, and they were afraid. So Pilate says, do what you need to do, and so they take Roman guards, put them before the 
the, to guard the tomb. They put a seal upon that stone to make sure that no one would tamper with that stone. And, and, uh, but the Bible says this about that stone, where the, the three, three women that were coming, the two Marys and Salome that were coming to the garden tomb, when they were thinking, how? How are we going to roll away this huge stone? Stone, who, who could help us roll this stone away? Well, the Bible says that an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and there was this earthquake, and the angel of the Lord just went, rolled that stone away. Why did he do it? Why did he roll the stone away? Because Jesus, he could walk through walls, the Bible. The Bible shows us that when he walked through the walls to see the disciples, he didn't need the stone rolled away, but the stone was rolled away for us. It was moved for us so that we could know that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead. But it was also a type and shadow of what God had sent his son into this world to do in our hearts and lives. The Bible says this at the Last Supper or the Passover when Jesus is talking to his disciples and he, he takes the bread and he takes the bread and he, he rips it and tears it and he says, take and eat for this is my body. And then he takes the cup and he says, this is the cup of the new covenant. That He says, it's my blood that will be shed for the forgiveness of many. The cup of the new covenant. A new covenant was being made that night. That covenant was this, that God Almighty had made a new covenant that no longer would man try to keep the laws of God, but God was coming with this new covenant. And he was, like, in, like it says in Hebrews, that God was writing on the hearts and on the minds of the people that receive him, that it would enter into this covenant, the law, that it would no longer be something they tried to keep, but it would just be a part of them, what they would, that they, it was written on their hearts and their minds. That's what God came to do. That's what Jesus came to do. The Bible says this in Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, 25 through 27. This is what the Lord says through Ezekiel. He said, then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. And then it says, moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove the heart of stone. Did I tell you that the stone has been rolled away? The stone has been rolled away. The stone has been rolled away. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will be careful to observe my commandments. God says, I'm going to cause you to walk in them. Why? Well, no longer are there something that you're trying to keep, but they become a, became a part of you through what Jesus Christ has done for, for us. In Romans, the sixth chapter, starting at the fourth verse, it says this. We've been buried with him through baptism into death in order that as Christ was raised from the dead, so we too might walk in newness of life. What's he saying? He's saying this, you know what? You've died with him. You've died with Christ. See, God commands us to be baptized. In Matthew, the last chapter, it says to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. What did he say? He told, well, commanded them to be baptized. Why did he say to be baptized? Well, baptism is like a prophetic declaration. You're declaring the principalities and powers, and you're declaring to all the people around you that you have died, that as you go under that water, you've died with Christ. And as you come up, you're telling them this, I've been resurrected. I'm a new creature. I've been risen. I've, I've been raised up with Christ. Now, God wants you to know that you're a brand new creature. 
that you've been raised up with Christ. The stone, the stone has been rolled away. You've got a new heart and a new mind, a heart of flesh that's soft and pliable before God. God's written his commandments upon your heart. The Bible says this, consider yourself right after Romans 6 chapter, starting at the fourth verse, and you go just a little ways down. It says, consider yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let me say that again. You've died, you've died, you've died, you've died. But you've been raised up, you've been raised up, you've been raised up. So you consider yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey its lust. Do not go on presenting your your body as to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourself to God as those alive from the dead. Did you hear that? But present yourselves as those alive from the dead. You've been raised up. And your members as, as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not have be master over you, for you're not under the law, but you're under grace. You're under this new covenant, this new covenant that gives you a new heart and a new mind so you can walk and pl- after God. You can please God now. You have a heart to do what is right, and you have power inside of you. The power of Jesus Christ, you living in him. You've died with him, and you're raised up with him. God says, hey, consider yourself dead now. You're dead to sin, but you know what? Hey, you're alive now. You're alive in Christ Jesus. You've been risen up with him. Then it goes in Ephesians, the second chapter. It says this, It says, we were dead in our trespasses and sins in which we formerly walked, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that's now at work in the sons of disobedience. That's the devil. Among them, we too also formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging in the desires of the flesh and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as all the rest but I love this, but God, but God being rich in his mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, he raised us up in Christ. Oh yes, we've been raised up, we've been raised up, we've been raised up in Christ by his grace. God wants you to know that he sent his son and that, that through what Jesus Christ has did when he died on that cross and he shed his precious blood for us. And when we call on his name now, when we call and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I know you're the son of God. I've got to have you. When we call on the name of the Lord, the Bible says we are saved. We are saved. What? We've been buried with him and we've been raised up. I want you to know the stone's been rolled away, that stony heart's been rolled away, and you're raised up in Christ. You have a wonderful day, and know this, God loves you. Oh, this God, he loves you, he loves you, he loves you. God bless you. Bye-bye.